So this is one of those live work sessions I like to do sometimes just uh, when I'm trying to figure something out or you know try to show other people how things are done in the in the construction world and this is an interesting project because this is a garage that I designed for um, a, a couple who own a really nice home really fancy home <laughs> and uh, it started out kind of like a really simple project let me go to the front and so they wanted a, the styling, and you can see some of my framed walls in here. I don't have the layers turned on correctly, but they wanted some of the styling uh, to be based on the, the house that they have now. So we got past this sort of schematic design phase, and now I'm in this phase of what makes sense on the framing. And this roof up here kind of uh, was okay in the schematic phase. But now I'm looking at it thinking that uh, it's probably not the best looking. I had lowered this pitch on the dormer because I thought it was maybe too high, you know, compete with this main ridge. But after looking at it, I don't like the way it's working out. So uh, I'm going to make it the same pitch. I'm, gonna, I'm going to attempt to make it the same pitch as the main roof system, which is a 1012. And, in a previous work session, I did sort of the main framing, the main rafters. I drew these rafters and kind of show how the common rafters work. And by the way, these, <coughs> excuse me, these rafters on each side of this opening, uh, and you'll see uh, soon enough, are going to be, um, they'll be LVLs. Because these doubled up rafters on each side of this will be carrying the roof load all the way across here. So they're almost like beams coming down. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to delete this, all of this mess. Well, what I may actually do is just, I may just copy this and just move, or just move this out here somewhere out of the way until it becomes annoying. And then delete that and delete all this don't even know what that was and I'm just going to start off with a pitch oh there's a you see just looking at that rafter annoyed me the way it was just kind of laying over and the other thing I did was raise this wall up to nine feet so that we would be coming up out of the roof better or more so a lot of this stuff I'll have to go over with the owner, but I don't think they're going to have a problem with it. I think we're going to be wasting a lot of space if we don't go up to a nine foot ceiling right here. But the best thing about it is this means I can just take one of these rafters, copy it up here. and spin it around 90 degrees. I do these um, videos, One eventually what I'd like to do is, and I've got a rough start on this, is uh, start a little school of construction. I've got kind of a rough start on the website and I've got some lessons up, but, and this may be, you know, videos like this may become part of those lessons because one thing we don't have in this country very good that's very that's done very well is uh, apprenticeship training for in construction we've gone to such a uh, uh, hey kingpin thank you yeah I try to check the comments uh, as often as I can but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this um, a unique rafter. If I change this one, it'll change all of these. Um, so and that's the idea of making a component. Uh, so what I'll do is, as a matter of fact, I could have just 
made one of those. And you know what I'm gonna do? Hmm, no, it'll be easier to do it this way. Uh, I was gonna make these two by eights. These rafters are two by tens. But I'm thinking I'm gonna make these two by eights. Well, we're gonna leave them two by tens because of our installation requirements. We have an energy code in Chattanooga. And um, it requires us to have an R38 in the ceiling. And uh, thankfully, they make an R38 that'll go into a 10 inch ceiling, uh, a two by 10 rafter. I'm gonna just type 180. There we go. And you'll see as I change one of these, the other the other one will change with it. But what I'm doing here is using um I I just wanted to find this this is an easy way to find the center on these it's just uh now i can just draw myself a line down here but what i'm going to do then is come over let's see on this i don't need an lvl so i can go over three quarters on the other ridge the larger ridge i've got um, an lvl which is an inch and three quarters and and so the important thing here is to note that your rafter length isn't going to be that little point there. It's going to be this point here. And you'll see why in a second. Now, uh, what you'll do is you'll watch the other rafter change along with this. See, because I made this a component and I copied it. So that's the neat thing about SketchUp. Well, and other CAD programs, you know, obviously have that feature too, but... Um, Now I can just bring that ridge right up here like that. But what I need to do is, uh, <coughs> wow, look at that. Dang it, I knew that was going to compete. Hmm. How did I get that that close just by coincidence? Hmm, that is funny. Well, that's what we're going to do then. <laughs> the other... The other ridge, uh, uh, through a combination of, I had this wall at eight feet before, so it was a foot shorter, and I had that wimpy eight twelve pitch on there, but I raised this up to nine feet and made this a ten twelve, and literally that brought it, I mean, within a, a millimeter. Listen to me using metric, Ooh, the devil. So that'll work good. I like that. But what I'm going to have to do is, uh, our building inspectors are picky about this. They don't want you using a ridge that's shorter. What is that? Yeah, I'll have to use an LVL. Let's see. Well, can I? I could probably get by with a 2 by 12 on this since it's like a dormer situation. Um, but I'm going to show it coming down. To there because that's what it needs to the, that little gap um, you know back in the old days you could have a ridge board that was a little bit short you could use like a two by ten here which would have been you know nine and a quarter you know where is that right about here somewhere and then you'd still have enough room to nail your uh, rafters to the ridge but now they want that ridge to come down to the bottom so that's why here you can see I'm using an LVL. I'm doing that for structural reasons, uh, although I don't really need it. Um, I just like how straight the LVLs are. If I try to use a dimension number, uh, plus I can get one long LVL to go all the way because this uh, is only 30 feet long. I can get a 48 foot uh, LVL. I know it's hard to get on the job, but I can get them and it'll be one long straight piece and 
then I can just notch it out down here for the soffit the way that works you can see all of this other stuff in our previous video on the one <laughs> where I thought I was live and I wasn't uh, it was I, I accidentally left it private so I was talking the whole time thinking I was talking to you and I was talking to myself by the way am I talking to myself still so this is this is cool so luckily this is turning out and um, now what I can do is I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make these LVLs too so what I'm gonna do is make If I if I try to change the uh, if I change the texture on these, it's going to change all of them. I'll just give you an example. Um, well, did I not make those components? Edit component. Okay, so why did it not change all of the? I guess that's just. Uh, I guess if I went in and edited it, it would change all of them. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. Well, that's cool. That means I can just change the texture on these two. Just to remind myself that those are LVLs, not when I'm ordering material. Those are, I want that to be like a beam. And you'll see why in just a second. Because, this, we're going to change since we're just going to have a nine foot ceiling what we can do here is frame this in let me just see how wide this is let me just fix that it should be 11 and 7 eighths What is that? I don't want to get too off, too far off my standard here. They're not going to fuss about that little gap. But what I don't want to do is start showing. I'm going to make that an LVL too. And then what I'm going to do is copy it and use it. Um, down here. And you will see what I'm doing in just a minute. Why am I 90? I keep so here's what you want to do you want to get this lvl we're going to create a beam we're going to create a situation where we don't have to frame in a a, a valley a true valley and the way you do that and this is um very effective it's and it will save you some time and money if it works out the way i want it to what you want to do is run this beam over where it's where it intersects with nine feet and these rafters I'm going to get on the other side of it here at the bottom see and this this is the kind of video that would you know would probably last several hours and nobody's going to watch all this unless they had to <laughs> Unless they're one of my students, which is kind of the idea. So, uh, in, in case you're not willing to sit here for that many hours, let me show you what I'm talking about. What we'll do is we'll end up running a, a ceiling joist across, across at that point. Across, that was a weird word, wasn't it? So we'll just copy this. 
and we'll make it a ceiling joist and no it's not going to be sitting up there like that so hold on it'll be a regular piece of dimension lumber and it will also just be uh probably two by eight seven point two five like that trying to grab my construction line and then those would go that would well, let's see first of all first of all let me let me bring this all the way over it will come over here and there will be these big uh, anchors or anchors <laughs> big big connect big connectors connecting these LVLs with those LVLs and let's see this would we, this one would be doubled so it would be like this and what you'd have here is like a doubled um, you'd have a double LVL hanger and most likely what I'll do is that means this has to be let's see what you need to do is get yourself in a situation where you know yeah so that's okay yeah that'll work out and I've got all these things going through my head. Sorry, and I can't say them all at the same time. But uh, anyway, then these ceiling joists. Would start right there. Well, maybe, yeah, necessarily. But they also, they're also collar ties. So if we were to just run one, we'll have them... Um, if I can lock that axis and get it up against this one. So what you'll see is, and I'll create this as a component, this would come over to where this bottom would be. Yeah. Let me get a get myself a construction line over there so I don't screw this up. That would go to there. And then put a construction line over here. These construction lines help because it keeps your reference point as you're moving back. See like that. So um and this would go this would get moved back. Let me move that back. It would get moved back to there. You see those are all in the same at the same height. All right. And then if I fix this, I can make this So left my construction line, so. This takes quite a bit of time, but if you take the time to go through all this, which I'm willing to do on my projects, then you will, this will actually, when I get ready to build my projects, they're in my head, man. I mean, they're, they are there. And I can give you much information <laughs> about them. And then so... Is that on the same... Times one, two, three, four. At least times four for right now. Where's my times? There we go. See, those become the collar ties. 
which give this, which tie those two together, that those two sides of the roof together, which keeps this from kicking, kicking that knee wall out. But I've also got these studs going down and tying in to here instead of just sitting on top of this floor, I'm gonna tie them into the sides of those floor trusses with the metal ties. So that as that tries to you know, push out, it'll, there'll be resistance there. So did those get lined up properly? Yeah. So you see where uh, these are, you could, you could consider these ceiling joist and collar ties at the same time. Now you could actually beef up these things make them two by tens I may do that and since I made them a, did I make it a component I forgot to make it a component didn't I what I'm going to do is actually delete those oops didn't mean to delete that one I meant to make this one a component but what I was going to say is you could make uh, <coughs> you could you could make uh, an area up here to put heat and air equipment because you've got what five feet there uh, five or six feet there so we could either put the heating and air conditioning equi equipment down here on one end of the garage and shoot it up into that duct space right there that's in the center of the floor trusses or we could put it up here and see these are all the things that should go through your head when you're doing your framing drawings and if you don't know how to do that, you can contact me and I can help you. <laughs> I can help you. Let's see, I wanna make that a component. Okay. Because, oops, I double clicked on the wrong thing. Because what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, make those two by tens but I'm getting kind of sidetracked here what I really want to do is show you how this roof framing inter interacts with each other is this on you gotta be careful when you're deleting these construction lines because they could be inside a group somewhere <clears throat> so the idea of doing this is that now the idea of having this beam across here having these two beams come down, which are kind of like rafters, they're rafters, but they're also beams on each side of the dormer, carry the load of this roof part in here. Okay, that part of the roof. So what you're gonna have then is, if I bring these, if I bring one of these rafters over 32 inches, which I know will get past to keep my layout, but also, get past the beam now what you will have is another type of rafter I'm going to make this one unique I will have a rafter that is just tied to that beam so I can get rid of that part of it yep like that and these will have joist hanger they'll have you know, a joist hanger, probably like what you'd use on a, for a two by 10 deck or whatever, you know, frame it, four joist or whatever. We'd call it a wrapper hanger in that case. And then I will have probably another two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 or 11, let's just go 10. times 10. There we go, I just copied those across. Like that, see? And so, see, that, I just created 10 or 11 little common rafters that would fill that in really quickly. And um, then what you'd have from there is, uh, let's see, we want to, this this roof would be built over on top of this one so what you would have is you would go ahead and deck that part <clears throat> let's fix let's let's fix this ridge 
because it's only it would only be coming back to here right there like that and um, now one thing that just occurred to me <coughs> Is that this is not a gable dormer this is a hip dormer so but what I was doing with that was uh, you just reminded me thanks any comments hello Vanessa kitty sorry I'm checking the comments every now and then I'm switching back and forth here from my screens thanks for joining this is kind of a uh, going to be kind of a lesson for some of my apprentices on roof framing so i thought i would just make it live in case anybody was interested but i'm kind of framing this now as if this was a gable dormer but it's actually a hip dormer but you start off much the same when you're trying to figure out how it's going to work because you take one of these rafters and the way you do a hip is you just turn one of these rafters at 90 degrees I have to do it over here now. That 90, yep. And then you put this going that way, and it'll line up. Where is it? I know where the center is now, so I'll just bring it over. To there, and see now. I know where my hip starts. So this is why I really, it only makes sense to learn a little CAD. If you're gonna be in this business, you know, and, and especially SketchUp is so easy to learn, it makes sense to uh, draw these out before you, you start building them. Cause I can literally, I literally take my laptop to the, to the job and my framer will ask me how long something, you know, I can save him a lot of time. I just tell him how long this ridge is. <laughs> I'll just say, cut yourself a piece of uh, LVL, you know, four, five, four foot five and seven eighths, you know, what's that, uh, 53 and seven eighths inches long. And, you know, it, it works. We've done it hundreds of times. See that, uh, that looks a lot better than what I had before. Now these, I can use these rafters. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. I don't like that 812 pitch I was using before. Now what I can do is use these rafters. I'll copy them. They will become common rafters over here because this part uh, over here, as you can see, sticks out. And I've got to frame this wall up all the way up to where it's level with this one. But what I was hoping to do was show how how this is going to tie in. Uh, and so I can delete these. Let's see, do I want to delete them or use them as, as rafters? Well, I can. what I'm going to do is delete. I'm going to frame one side and then copy it to the other side. So, also what you would have is these little joists coming. Let's see, do I have a, what I should have done. Any more comments? Oh, you're designing your 16 by 12 workshop. This helps tremendously. I've got, um, I've got some other drawings that have simpler roof designs on them. And of course, if you need any help with that, I can I can help you. Uh, my wood-fired oven design is SketchUp. Oh yeah, and the great thing about SketchUp is the 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 warehouse, the the 3D warehouse. I mean, you can go on the 3D warehouse and type in, you know, pizza oven. <laughs> you go, know? and there's lots of things all, already drawn. I mean, I go, I go here and get things all the time. You know, toilets, tubs, uh, fixtures, all kinds of light fixtures to save time. And uh, some of that stuff is, you know, there's no reason to redraw it. 
And um, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and convert these 2 by 8 ceiling joists into 2 by 10s because I'm afraid that's going to be 9 and a quarter. Nine, I mean, 9.25 is a ceiling, is a 2 by 10. Because I think what's going to end up happening is a lot of times people will want to insulate uh, between. They'll want to put their insulation in between the joists so they can put a plywood over the top of that and make a platform in the attic, which makes sense. So I'm just going to make that a 2 by 10 instead of a 2 by 8 Then I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to bring it over here. And um, on your ceiling joist, these will be little short ceiling joists. Obviously, they'll just go to that beam. Go back to there. Can I still see that? Yep. That needs to go back to there. And then on these ceiling joists, what you do is you'll just nip off this little part right here. With your saw and we just kind of when we're cutting those we just kind of eyeball it because we kind of get an idea of how much it is and this may seem kind of weird but if you're looking at the ceiling level you can see that the ceiling is going to be the same height all the way across and you'll never know it when you're standing in the room You'll never know that there was this transition where these rafters come down and stop. Obviously, if they kept coming on down, they would be in the way of your dormer uh, ceiling. And uh, But now what i got to do is frame in this hip, and that's kind of um, tedious, but uh, we can do it. So, because I'm going to just do one side, and then... Um, and then copy it. So what basically a dorm, uh, a valley, let's see, this would be turn, uh, I keep, I'm sorry, <laughs> I need to turn this 45 degrees. I can't talk and draw at the same time. I'm not that good of a teacher, am I? But um, the way this works is, and I don't know if I can use this or not, I'm not just uh, it might be just too weird. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is start off from scratch on this instead of trying to convert this. Let's see. What would it take? I would have to... Yeah, all my angles are going to be weird. So what? what's weird is on a hip, on a hip or valley rafter, and this is a hip rafter, is they're just, everything's different about them. So what I'm gonna do is, what I should have done is, because what, what it is, is you gotta, you, you gotta have a, you gotta imagine, well, I'll just draw it for you. This is what you, if you had a, a normal hip, let's just copy this over here. You would have two roofs coming at each other from the same direction, or I mean at 90 degrees, right? So you'd have one rafter coming this way, and then you'd have another one coming in the other way. Well, let me see if I can explain this. So the intersection of those corners, well, it gets kind of weird, you see? So those roofs would intersect like that. I'm on the corner, each each of them on the corner. Yeah. So the, the height, the height of that, the height of the heel of this rafter can only be this high. So what you do is this, what you do is uh, you just have to draw it and hope for the best. <laughs> so you, 
your rafter is an inch is an inch and a half wide, right? Your let's see, we're gonna use a you know on this small of a on this small of a roof, we could use an inch and a half. So if I just come up here and I guess, um, what the, let's see, there should be much guessing here. If I what I could do is just bring this. Let's see. I could, what I could do is just for the fun of it, take one of these and copy it. This might be the simplest thing instead of trying to guess too much, make sure I have it. Here's what's funny about this stuff is that this is easier to do in the field than in the CAD. Sometimes it's easier to do this stuff in the field than it is in CAD. I don't know how to explain that. Uh, because it's, it's easier for me to manipulate this by my, with my hands. Uh, there we go. I accidentally, accidentally raised that up. See, I got to keep that down on that and scoot it out to where, maybe I could do it this way, and then scoot it out. And this is this is what I mean, it's easier in the, in the field. Uh, because my rafter, my rafter doesn't wanna, here we go, now we're getting close. See, that's kind of where your that's kind of where you want your rafter to be, right there. But the other the other thing about it is is that it doesn't if I if I extend this out, it doesn't it doesn't work at that uh, at the right angle. It's more like a if this is a if this is a thirty five degree angle, this is more like let me make this unique make unique and I'll just make this work I'm gonna find the center of this like that and I'm gonna bring it up here where am I here I am that would be right there see a little bit why won't that snap I don't know why that won't snap let me put myself a construction line there. That should have. Okay, so it is not wanting to actually. And that's why I say this is easier to do. In real life, I just grab that sucker and I just put it there. But since I'm in CAD, nothing wants to work. So that would go to there. <clears throat> actually. Let's see. No, it's got to be dropped too. This point right here has to be. That's what it is. Where can I get me a vertical line over there? Oops. This point right here. Get that whole thing again. This point right here has to be right there. See? And this is what's weird about the, uh, and then if I do this, I can just grab this one point right here, this one line, and that would, ex that would be cut like that, you see? Let me get rid of some of these construction lines now. And then I can, you see, so that, that's how you're, that's, and then of course, since I, since I messed with the angle up there, I messed with the angle down here. So what you have to do is, uh, this, this whole thing, and that's why I said I should have just started out from scratch, because what I would have done was I would have drawn myself a line from here to there, like that, and start out that way. Let 
what I could do is to make this simple let me see if I can grab let me see if I can get on a reference here and just bring this whole end up I can see it's not going to let me it's not going to let me raise that end up why not it's going to make me cock that it's going to make me rotate that so what I'm going to do is put myself that reference line uh, from here to the center of this like that what I could do is make myself a but in, in any event um, in a normal video let's see if there's any questions let's see gotta have the valley beam no you don't have to have the valley this is a, uh, let's see, this is, there's two ways to frame a valve. There's two ways to do this. And I'm showing you the easy way, okay? If, if your ceiling height is, is this height in here, okay? And you can, you can, this is the easy way to do this, okay? You can put yourself a double, you know, like use the LVLs on either side of the dormer, like this. And then you have an, a, another doubled LVL here, which is sized to carry this roof load. And I know from experience that 211 and 78 LVLs will carry this load right here. Okay. So now all these are common rafters. All the rafters on this roof are easy, right? All the rafters on this whole side are easy. There's only two lengths of rafters. Okay. If you if I put in a valley, a true valley here. Uh, first of all, I have to get it over to here before I can put in a true valley. I have to frame this over to here to get it to a true valley. And then I have to put in a, a, a valley rafter from there to there. And then I've got all these odd... Uh, I don't need to do that unless they want the ceiling vaulted inside to, do, to look that way. right? Unless you want an intersecting vault inside here. I don't... But I've already got a nine foot ceiling in here. I don't need to create that complexity. So what I can do is do this and then I can build, where's my roof decking? <clears throat> Let's see. Let me get rid of one of these. I need to get rid of some of this junk. Turn on my layers. Roof, roof. Let's see. I don't think I've got the the decking. Yeah, I don't have it. I've got I've got this. I basically have the you know what texture for the roofing on there for right now. But see, that's how the decking would be. <clears throat> you would just that's how that's how simple the decking would be on this roof. You would just uh, imagine all those shing that shingle look just being the roof decking. And then you frame this part on top of it. And it's going to take me a few hours. I could literally build this quicker in real life than me drawing it in CAD. Uh, because all these different rafters are going to be uh, a different length. So uh, I'll just have to, once I get one of them, I can kind of, you know, copy it and, and get it get it working right but uh, messing with this um, but what I was going to do is I may to get this to get this uh, hip uh, hip rafter I may just draw myself a um, a 15 foot square 15 feet by 15 feet and because I've got this um, 
let's see, I might have to mess with this a minute. Let's see. I've got several different, uh, let's see, roof, roof Nui. I've got this, let's see, touch cables. I haven't used this one. Oh, okay, select my face. I haven't used this one that much, so I may have to mess with it a little bit. Make roof. And I'm just going to select a um, presets. Let's see. Preset. Let's go here. Let's go to. I can't. I know y'all can't see this. I can just barely see it. Where are the hip roofs? Hip primary full. That's a hip. I can use this because it's a hip. Okay. And then hit this dial. Yes, let's see. Let's go. Eve. Pitch. I want to go 10, 12. Roof underside, no answer. Let's see, Eve. Eve width. Five feet, holy cow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hips. Let's just see, uh, let's just see what I come up with. Let's just run it this way and see what it does. Okay. Cause what I might be able to do is just steal this, um, I might be able to just steal this hip rafter out of here. Why won't it let me delete that? Oh, that's the original. Yeah. See now I don't like using this. Uh, I don't like using uh, this kind of thing uh, because I mean I, actually, I know it sounds weird. I like drawing long roofs, but that's a that's a that's a that is an option I could do. But what I may do is just take. Uh, let me go back. I just didn't want to spend a lot of time. These things are they're handy, but it's not the kind of thing that you want to just waste a lot of people's time with, uh, especially if you're watching. It's it's a Valley Architects. This guy I kind of know this guy. He built this uh, extension, and it's really cool. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not trying to say anything negative about it. It's just that I can't see very well, and I'm sure there's a there's a one in here somewhere that I could just use. I could just grab. But I wish these graphics were a little bit bigger. What does that say? Santa Barbara. See, it's not, instead of just having this just simple, you know, make it a hip or whatever, you gotta go through. Let me try this other one. Let's see, big truss, roof truss, roof rafters. Let's try this one. Gable roof, let's try hip roof. Hip roof, here we go. I like my deep too because um, okay. Oh yeah, on this one. Um, okay, yeah, his is a little more straightforward. Symmetrical hip, roof pitch ten twelve. I think we're gonna be. I think we're gonna be in business. Business here. Rafter depth, nine and a quarter. Rafter width, ridge board is a two. Uh, let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah. First mouth, uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's good. Ceiling joist, no, I don't need ceiling joist. Uh, joist. Choice depth, I don't need that. Okay. Building length, rafter spacing 16. Roof framing, yes. Advanced options, no. All right, here we go. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Medique. Now, if I was smart, I would just, I would have done that for this, okay? But I don't like doing that because, let me turn that roof. Because I'm, I wanna build this thing in my head and you can see mine's a little more complicated. This, this job is a little more complicated. Uh, what I could do is I could literally steal half of this. Let's see if it will work. Where did I make these? Just to show you guys what it would look like. That is, you know, everything is going to be right. All I have to do is go in here and edit this. What I'm going to do is copy this because as long as I don't alter that one, I can edit that one. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually explode this one. And I'm going to delete half of it. And then I'm going to make this half a group. And then I'm going to sit it up there. Just to show you, I'll show you. And then I'm going to line it up with my. See, and that's what I was trying to show you with my hip. See, is my hip about the same? Yeah, see my hip is basically in the same place as theirs, and th but it, it would have taken me uh, a longer, <laughs> longer draw because, and I'm glad, I'm glad I remembered this too because now I can get rid of this one. And my rafter, it's my rafter basically, let's see. Where's my rafter? Yeah, my rafter is the same is in the same position so I can delete it I don't need it and then this is this is the complicated it's not complicated to it's not complicated to build it's just complicated to draw okay so uh, but now what I can do is show you at least how that hip would work like that let me get rid of this construction line I don't know why the construction line is driving me nuts I just can't Let's see if we got any more questions. It needs to handle loads on the floor to make it usable storage. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Uh, you've only got, um, and I've got these, these ceiling joists are going to be two by tens and they will be, you know, held on with the correct fasteners, but you've only got, um, how much space here you only got like five feet there right so you can stand up in the middle but you can you just barely stand up uh, you know you hunt you have to lean your head over so there's not as much storage space I mean there is storage space up here but most likely what I'm interested in doing is um, um, putting the heat heat maybe putting the heat and air unit up here because I was going to set it back here on, and put, you know, build a little closet around it. Cause they're going to have a little tool room area back here. And then what I was going to do is run my duct work up into this floor truss, uh, duct opening down the center of the floor trusses. And then I could shoot out, you know, duct work from there, but that's one option. The other option is to put it up here. But when you do that, remember, you got to have a pull down stair. Uh, in our area, the building inspectors won't let you just put a, a hatch to get up there. You got to have, a, if you have equipment in the attic, you got to have a, a pull down stair. And so now you're going to, you know, now you got to do one of those. So it's not a huge deal, but let's see. It needs to have all loads on the floor to make it usable. Um, yeah, I mean, I can make this, I can make this. These, these two by tens. Um, of course, now the loads on this floor are over engineered anyway. These floor trusses are set up uh, to do, I think it's L over 480. There's, he's talking about putting a pool table up here. <laughs> and if you look at the, uh, just the architectural side of this, 
we've got a door here. You know, uh, I mean, I'm even, I mean, I'm even going to have these these handrails so you can just take four bolts out and get this off, and he'll be able to pull, you know, take stuff and put it in through this door. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the, um, then I'm probably going to have him locate the, make him locate the pool table, or at least tell him, tell him where he thinks he's going to put it. And I'll probably, I may run LVLs beside, you know, at each end of the pool table. So like maybe it's an eight foot pool table. I just run one all the way across, you know, eight feet apart. But let me show you how this is roof decking. Uh, what you do is you go ahead and roof de deck this whole side, right? And then you've got a platform uh, to build on top of. But uh, what you would have here is you would have, let's see, we would have, I'm trying to think of a, a good way to do this without losing our, um, Well, we would have a little, what you'd have here is a little bit of a triangular, whoops, dang, zooming. You'd have a little bit of a framed wall here, like, and I'm trying to, I'm trying not to spend too much time on too many details, but I don't know what people are interested in, but you'd have a, uh, you'd have a framed wall that went from here, where's the end of that, um, down. To here and then back up to here. So if I if I wasn't going to frame that, if I was just going to show it, I could make this. If I can I grab that, make this a group, and then and then bring it out to where it would be, you know, it would be three and a half framed like that, and that would just that would just kind of visually show you where the little framed wall would be. We'll just let that, and I'll go back in. And I'll go back in and actually turn that into studs and a plate. But I can. The reason I can get by with that is because I can hang each one of those studs off of this LVL. I can just put uh, angle brackets on each stud coming down, and see that gets me that gets my rafters over too. And all you do is uh, as you go this. This rafter right here, are they, did they make these? I need to, I need to explode these groups. Did they make these? They didn't make these components. Nope, they didn't, good. So if I edit this one, it won't hurt anything. So most likely this one And this is, this isn't totally accurate, but just to give you an idea, because I don't think people are going to sit through this whole thing. This one would just be kind of whacked off, <laughs> uh, and I'll fix that in a minute. But uh, but what you would have is decking. You would deck this entire side of the roof first. So let me just I could just deck the side. I can just deck the part around this roof. Probably wouldn't hurt anything. Let's see. Let's go um, eight feet by four feet. That'll be our piece of OSB. And why did that not come out in the center? Oh, it did, and that would be seven sixteenths thick, and then it's the same. We'll just give it the same hatch as uh, this. I know it's not Advantech, but let me make that a group. Just to get to where I can see that without grabbing everything. Make that a group. And then I can hatch it and that'll make it look like a piece of OSB. But then, of course, that would have started down here. 
but for the sake of time, what I'll do is I'll go one, two, three. Times three. Where'd that get me? 24 feet. Yeah. Um, well, heck, we'll just do three sheets all around the um, the dormer. So then what I would do is I would make this whole decking group a group and then I can move it. Let's see, what do I want to do? I'm going to go down at least three, three rafters probably just to kind of center it around. Yeah, that's... Uh, And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit because I really don't want to, but I'm trying to show as much information in a short amount of time as I can because I don't think people are going to sit and watch this for a long time. So these would be, then these would come down here, be like that. See that row. And then it would zigzag back and forth like that. Then this row, would go back down here, like that, you see. So you would deck that hole down to, you would just, so this row would then, I wonder if I can use this. Let me just, one thing I could do is just, since you all got me started on this, <laughs> just go ahead and put this, I don't, I forgot what chain my layout started from. Put this down here, or maybe get down there. Good Lord, get down there. You see, working with 3D uh, software is kind of a pain sometimes. We're just gonna, this will, let's just let this hang over an inch for now. And then, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to see how my uh, rows would work out. How many rows I would have. OSP because then this one would go back up here like that so yeah and then I have a little short row up there so let me go make myself a uh, roof I thought I had one decking I keep my layer convention separate um, from the way these uh, other extensions do, just so I can tell the difference between them. So uh, if you notice I named mine a roof decking, so all my layers for the roof stay together in one area and all their layers for the, their roof stuff stay, stay together. So now if I want to just turn that off, if I can get back to it, and I just, oops, well, why did that? Hmm. That was not right. That whole thing was supposed to be in roof decking. Yeah. Oh, was in the, now let's see. Yeah, now we're good. Um, so you can see, what would happen is, uh, let's go, is these, where this part of it's just sitting on, on the roof, then I would have, let's see, is that, 
Why does that go all the way over there? Is that a component? Yes, it is. Why? They have made, uh, <clears throat> for some reason, they made that uh, that halfway point a component. That's odd. That's not a component. Okay, that's what I want to get to. I want to get down to individual members here. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one. And it'll be an individual. It'll be a, its own entity. 16 times what? 3. So you can see what will happen is you'll start to form a line down here for your valley. See? Like that. And what, what you can do is you can frame that part on top of the roof decking. You see? And that means that you only have to cut these. Now you've got half the number of rafters that you have to cut odd. Right? Does that, does that make it clear? Does that make it seem easier? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> now, if you've got a, um, you said your, Vanessa Kitty, you said your, yours was a what, 16 by 12? Yeah, I mean, that's small enough to where if you want to, because I, I know you've watched for a long time. I don't mind helping you out. So, I, you know, I get paid to do this for most people, but for some people, I'll, I'll help out <laughs> for free. <laughs> but on something that small, if you want to send me your, um, send me what you've got, I don't mind doing a, because um, it might be as easy as me putting one of those extensions on it and, and helping you out that, that, that fast. Unless it's uh, something a little more complicated, I would just draw it, draw it out like I'm doing now. Uh, I know in New York it must be cold. It must stay cold all year round or all all winter long up there. We, you know, today it's like 55 degrees here in Chattanooga. So I, I actually. Um, Six by sixteen to twelve upper floor part wall attic. But uh, if you want to show, send me some sketches of what you got or whatever you've got so far. But it's funny, my wife was laughing at me because I was calling some of my subcontractors today, today asking if they were working, and nobody nobody answered the phone. <laughs> she was like, "Why are you calling them?" I said, "I don't know. I'm just checking in. You know, it didn't hurt to check." They're big boys. They can tell me no. But uh, let's see. That would go there. And then what did I do? Did I put that on the wrong? Yeah, I put that on the wrong level. Let me move it up. Okay, here we go with this. Uh, you see, I think it's down there, but it's really up there, up in the air like that. So. And sometimes it just doesn't want to act right. I had to force it down there. You'll see what I mean if you ever kind of start using SketchUp. It's it's very intuitive. Okay, I don't want to give the wrong impression, but um, so now here's what we'll do here. I don't want to start off on the wrong foot here. On this top, when you're decking this, you need to leave a gap here down an inch on either side for, for ventilation for your ridge vents. Because nowadays we, we, don't, we don't use these static roof vents anymore. We use continuous ridge vents and you always want to cut your roof sheeting back like that. So now that would be my little piece at the top. And I would just, uh, just for now, I'm not going to deck the whole roof necessarily. I'm just going to show if my zoom would quit going crazy on me. Show a couple pieces to show what that looks like. And then 
uh, I guess let's see what am I trying to what would I where would I start this for some reason I keep losing my computer keeps freezing a little on me I need a new computer this computer is like four years old already <clears throat> and even though it will run um, what is going on That's why it keeps, keeps hesitating. So I'm trying to think of which, um, which end I would start the layout from, because I was going to go ahead and adjust. I think if I move this whole thing to maybe, let me just move this to where it would be on the overhang and then there and see how close it is so that would mean we'd start right here see I get I get started on this stuff and now I can't stop now I gotta uh, I'll have to deck the whole roof now see what you did to me well maybe I can maybe if I just get it started here enough to, to show. I gotta remind myself that this is a work session and I'm not gonna be editing this for a video, so I need to just calm myself down and dig in and get it done properly. But what I was gonna show was uh, where this the reason I was trying to get that lined up properly is because these these sheets obviously here like this one would come down you know somewhere right here what I should have done was put myself a construction line there I got it. Yeah, they'll come down a little bit more. Like that. And this one. <clears throat> For some reason, my, my computer is uh, acting weird. I know you can't see it, but, but it's uh, when I'm trying to draw a line, sometimes it's not responding and it's, it's kind of freaking me out a little bit because it hasn't done that before. And right now it's not a good time to be having to buy a new computer. <laughs> or have an upgrade one even. I've got the memory maxed out on this already because of the, the, the SketchUp requires a, a heavy amount of memory to run it. I actually bought a new computer about, what was it, four or five months ago, and the thing, I showed up my construction line there, the, um, it wouldn't even run SketchUp, a brand new computer, and I had not, um, checked it's uh it didn't have dedicated a video for you know for sketchup what you really want is a computer that has like an nvidia 1070 or something 
I think this one's got the 970 or whatever that's uh, dedicated. What am I doing? Oh, I had built that little wall. Just to uh, graphics, and you got to go in and set the NVIDIA. You have to go in and actually set it so that it chooses the proper video card, the proper, you know, video card while it's running because it'll want to default to like the Intel, the integrated one, and it won't run it. It just won't, not on the computers I bought, it, it won't. So, anyway. If you now the, the the online version of SketchUp, what did I do? Ah, uh, the online version, the web version, the web browser version of SketchUp is not as memory hungry, obviously. So now these sheets right here, this sheet right here will go up to where it is out of the way. Yeah, it'll go up to here. So let's see, where's the top of it? Or do I even need that sheet? Where is it? No, I don't even need that. Oh, that worked out good. I don't even need that sheet. Well, we'll have to do those. Bring this sheet back. If I can see the end of it. Oh, I grabbed the end of it. No. Back. I'm going. Back to there. Let work. No, oh, it'll have to go. That didn't work out too good. Well, what'll happen is on these valleys, what you'll do is you'll lay a piece of, uh, in this case, a two by 12 down. Let's see if we have any other questions. Trying to figure which version of SketchUp to buy. I want to pay the yearly fee, but can't afford. Yeah, it's kind of, um, there's really only two options there. You can do, you can get what's, what I have is SketchUp Pro. Obviously I use it for a living, so it's worth it. And uh, SketchUp Pro comes with a, a program called Layout. And it's where you do your drawings. I mean, it's where you do your printed uh, in CAD, we have these concepts. So one is uh, paper space versus model space. And layout is kind of your paper space. This is where you would set up your sheet sizes. Let me see if I can just pull up a quick, uh, quick example. What have I got in here? If it'll come up. I wonder if it's because I'm doing the live streaming at the same time. But, um, yeah, like here, here's a little job I did for a fella. And I'll show you the sheets. Now this is set up on 11 by 17. I like that size for small projects. So this is physically uh, 11 by 17 inches. And you can see I have a cover sheet with all the, the drawings listed. Then I have a foundation plan, a container plan, a roof framing plan, roof decking, elevations. You know, these are basically set up so that I can uh, print these out or save them in PDF format. And so, this is what I would print out to give to my subs or any other contractors. It has all the job information on it. 
that's kind of what you would call paper space. It's called, you know, layout. And layout is what the program's called. You get that uh, with SketchUp Pro. So what I would do is, um, and see, SketchUp honestly is not very good at two-dimensional, um, you know, working with in two dimensions. I mean, you set up your views, like here is the first floor plan, and I have to turn off the framing. I need to turn off, I haven't set this up. Let me turn this off first. Where's that framing layer? Where, what in the world? Anyway, so, you know, this is where you would set up your views. This is the second floor plan. And I haven't, what layer, I haven't set the, the framing up in the proper layer yet. So it's, it's showing up. It wouldn't show up normally. And then you would set your views up in, in SketchUp, but you don't, you can print them. They just don't, it's, it's set up for modeling more than anything. And then your layout software is made for construction documents, you know, because and they've done this purposely, like the, like the dimensioning in, they've kind of made the dimensioning in, in SketchUp kind of suck on purpose, you know, like, I mean, but I mean, honestly, you are, like you are trying to dimension in three, you know, in 3D, <laughs> but, and they'll try to make it scale as you back up, see? See, I'm going in and out and they're trying to make it scale. Well, that, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But if I want now, if I want to do a, a, a the floor plan, and it's quarter inch uh, per foot or three sixteenths or whatever, I can't really do that. Uh, I mean, I can set up these different zoom levels in, but that's not the same thing. Everything in SketchUp is drawn to full size. This literally is a twenty four foot by thirty foot building I'm drawing everything full size then I go to my paper space and then I scale it the way I want it scaled there uh, so I can take the same model and scale it however I want to depending on you know what I'm trying to show whether it's a detail or a floor plan or not this is a cool dual storage container roof Oh yeah, yeah. So and that was again that was another little paid project and I that's that one was inspired by the one I did for uh, one of one of the enlisted um, one of the chiefs. <laughs> uh, one of the I did one of those jobs for the CBs uh, for some guys that were active duty in Africa. They're all home now, thankfully. Thank God they're all home. Um, but that one, the one I did for them was not really, uh, it was an emergency type situation and they had, uh, they had limited lumber. They only had two by sixes that were 16 feet long. So I had to I design a really low sleeping roof. And so the guy wanted to just buy that design and I told him I couldn't do that. So I designed a new roof for him and I have a, a series of videos for that. But I think I'm talking too much. So let me, let me just show you how this would work. And I see I've got my line. This line's all weird. What is that? Is that line in here? Yeah. I see what I did wrong now. But what you would do here is, before you start framing these valley, um, these valley rafters here, you would uh, lay yourself a two by, probably a two by 12. So I would, you want a big flat surface here and you'll see why in just a second. I'm just gonna make it this long for now. I can always extend it. So what that's gonna be is a two by 12. So it'd be 11 and a quarter inches wide. Yeah, that works out good. So it goes to the back. So I'm just going to draw a 
a line from here. Let's see. From to there, and I'm just going to draw one from here. I'm having a hard time seeing my um, reference point there, so I'm just going to draw there to there, and then I'll draw from here. What I'm trying to do now is just get um, something started that I can turn into a group. Did I get my... Hmm. Let me do, let me try this. Yeah, I don't know what happened down here. Hmm. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. The other thing in SketchUp is sometimes it's easy to get things non coplanar. Like, I, sh I didn't make sure that I had that little amber line there, which means uh, I'm extending. Let's see if I've got a... Yeah, I should have had a face there. 0.25. Why does that not look like it's an inch and a half thick? Why did I make it an inch and a quarter thick? That's the real question. The real question. I should have made it 1.5. <laughs> right, so then I'm going to just delete these other lines that I don't need. I still don't understand why that doesn't look like it's thick, inch and a half thick. It is. That's odd. That's bizarre. It's so wide it doesn't look like it's an inch and a half thick. It may be just the way I'm looking at it. But that's another question. What is that that doing? Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to run this. Oops. Let me make that a group. Hopefully I haven't grabbed anything else. Now I can move this over. <coughs> there. Is that still laying on the roof? Yeah. And it, this this seems like it, it's overcomplicated in the way I'm doing it now, but it's not. A lot of this stuff, again, is easier to do in real life. Believe it or not, I said I don't want that one. I want that color. Yeah. Um, Then it's, I mean, imagine yourself taking a tube of 12 and just laying it down on the roof. That's how much, that's how much easier this would be <laughs> than me having to draw it at this weird angle. Um, so don't take that, uh, that this roof framing is that hard just because it's hard to draw it sometimes. Sometimes it literally is, a lot of the times it literally is harder to draw than to build it. But the point is of this I'm trying to show is that you would, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, I don't want people to get discouraged on, and think that this is a complicated way to build this when it's actually the easiest way to build it. Um, and that would come down, why well, is not staying on my line? Gonna lock that in, and that would stay. That would come down all the way to here, like that. And then this one would go. All the way up to here. This. Let me put a. Let me put a line over here. On that side. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. So you cut that. Where it comes up and kind of butts into your ridge there, like that. And you, this this little raft right here is optional. You really don't need that one. But then the other side of that two by twelve would be cut. Is that gonna? If I can 
can get to where I can see it. I really only want that little part. See, there I'm gonna now. I could probably see it. Yeah, there we go. That would be cut to where it's on the other side of that. Did I get it close? Yeah, it's close enough. So, you see, you take that 2 by 12 and lay it down flat on the roof like that. And then all you gotta do is cut these. Let's see, if I can get rid of my construction lines those things then what you're doing is you're just laying out your rafters make sure that's not a yeah. then for the sake of time I'm just going to cut these off let's see I guess I might as well just try to go ahead and cut it off Will that work? Yeah. Each one of these will get cut off. Like that. I'm sure there's some junk under here. That I haven't got. Yeah. And uh -oh, am I gonna take the time to do all that on all all those? So that maybe I'll do a couple of them. I see a I see a piece I missed down there. This is <laughs> there. That's the, like I said, I could cut that off with a saw quicker than I could cut it off in CAD. <laughs> the way this is funky. Uh, well, it's got that compound bevel on there like that. But I promise you that is much easier. Cutting cutting all these rafters off just to sit on that is much easier than trying to cut a compound valley. Um, you know, to have a valley rafter that comes down because, because it's a waste of time because all that work is just going to be in, a, in, a, in an attic. Again, if I was going to make this whole thing vaulted to where I could see that, and then it's kind of a mess with your drywall too, because then if you have a true valley, the valley rafter is actually bigger, hangs down farther uh, than the other rafters. So then you got to fur down all these rafters to meet the bottom of that so that your drywall works out good. It's just a mess. Let me see if I've got any. I should stop pestering the teachers. Uh, no, no, I like, uh, I like, I mean, that's why I do these, so people can ask questions. Yeah, drop it on your line, Mark. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know how to do it. It's just, uh, sometimes when you're trying to talk and explain things and draw at the same time, it's, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been building these things for 40 years, so there's no problem. And that's why that's why I don't want people to think is that this is somehow uh, complicated. Uh, and literally, I could have I could have already probably me and a couple of my carpenters could have already built this hip roof in the probably the amount of time I've just been sitting here talking about it. So, but the reason is is because when we get around to that, I'm going to go out and I'm going to say, "Hey, Paco, look at this. This is what I want to build." And he goes, "Oh, okay, I get it." And that's how simple that, that is. Well, if I spend the time now uh, showing him what I want to do, then I'm saving time in the long run. And I get paid for a little bit of this. The customer does pay for the drawings. Um, I don't. I can't charge them for all of my time because it would be a million dollars. But uh, I, I, I can get. I can get up to that point at what the market will bear uh, for the drawings.
but that's what you would do. You just continue to cut those off all the way up. And then one thing I can do is once I Oops, that was not smart. I wasn't actually, I wasn't actually editing. I was not in the edit mode yet. I got to double click on it. Now I can edit it. And since that rafter extends over that a little bit, I don't have a, a very good end point. So I'm just letting it go past it and then deleting that little part that goes past it. And I'll go under and delete all this other junk under here when I get done. I guess I could go and delete this one since I'm here. I don't know how long I've been going, been going quite a while. I just want to show at least one side of this. Am I? Oh, did it again. Did I make these silly mistakes when I'm live live streaming. I can just click right through this if I'm not trying to show it. But when I start trying to show it, I start making these silly little mistakes. I forgot to be in edit mode again. There we go. I can tell because uh, if I do certain things, it acts a certain way. If I'm in edit mode, obviously, so like when I delete that, keep to work it. One more, because I'm going to delete this little rafter. There's no reason to even have that one. And since I'm in edit mode, I don't have to worry about, since, since I'm editing that one group, I don't have to worry about deleting anything else. All right, so that's that side. So now I can um, just copy that. Copy that, Roger. Let's just go out of editing mode here for a second and see. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is make a group
I'm going to delete this whole side. And then this will be all one side. Make it a group. Group. And then I can copy it. And then mirror it. And then move it back. There we go. Very cool. See? And that is your, except for, uh, again, I gotta, I guess I could just copy this little wall over for now. This is how we draw walls here in schematic mode. Like I, I don't, wouldn't go through all the trouble of drawing all the framing uh, members until I got the schematic design approved. I just realized I put that. I didn't mean to put that in. I meant for that to be its own group. So that was an easy fix. So then, for now I'm just going to show this coming over 15 feet, but then I'll have to back it up. Three and a half. There we go. So you'd have those two little triangular walls built on either side, like that. And that gives these rafters something to sit on. And that's kind of your framing. And then, I, then your decking, obviously. Did I fix this? Oh yeah. And then I would have, let's see how many of these ceiling joists I can get in here. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. There we go. And then what you would do here is they would simply just change direction. have these ah, I can't get my reference point let me just type in 90 <laughs> just want to snap to something weird and that would go there there like that and then you would just put in you would just put in little blocks of dead wood laying on top of the wall right here just to give yourself something to nail to in the corner but see, then that gets your ceiling flat. See, then you would have these. So let me fix this beam. See, then this whole thing. Did I make that a group? No, I didn't. But it's no big deal.
should have. I think this is a group. And I'll go back and fix the other one so it's a group. Then that point right there goes over to there. Is that what I did on the other side? Pretty sure, yeah. Then this, yep. Yeah. And this comes over, and that's in like that. And then we got a series of those. Let me turn off my roof decking for a second. Because we would have supposed to be here what happened there that's right and then that should be over against that <sighs> see that's frustrating sometimes I can't get my reference what is going on with these rafters? Oh, I moved it. I didn't copy it. Duh. Well, there we go. I just copy this one. See how easy it is to make mistakes? Now that I can get my reference point. Yeah, there we go. Like that. So that'll be our, let's see, I bet you this ceiling joist is not the right length either. It's a little off. But once I get that correct, I can copy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just pick any old point. Sixteen times ten. There we go. Let's see, that's what I was trying to demonstrate. <clears throat> now your ceiling, let's see. Uh, those don't line up exactly. I could probably work that out better. That's kind of funny. Just for that little section, it's probably not going to matter that much. <clears throat> but see, you'll never know that there was a, any kind of change there. The way that's done. And this, this is going to be a lot easier. Having, this, having all these rafters cut the same a lot easier and, uh, and you just don't see this in drawing this is the way to get built in real life <laughs> you don't see them this way in drawings you'll see uh, if I were to use that uh, you know that roof uh, extension to it would show it as a true valley but you know in real life we, we try to you know we try to be smarter than that and do things that are as just as strong but quicker, and uh, and this is how they get built. So if I turn on my roof decking, and then obviously this whole thing will be decked, you know, like that. And now you can see that I think that's going to make a much better looking dormer than this thing that I had before. See how much more prominent that that that's going to be. I think I actually have that um, roof dormers. Yeah, I have it so I can turn it off. But you can see that's going to make a much better looking dormer 
than what, I, what we had in the schematic design. And so now what I gotta do is build this wall up this wall that's showing up in the schematic design part of it, which is, you know, sort of your temporary uh, design. And when we go into what we call our construction documents, now we're, we're building it for real in the drawing. So I'm just going to turn off. I'm going to go back to my framing view. And now I got to build a real wall up to here. And then I'll just copy this side around and now that I know for sure, I'm not going back to that old roof, that old eight and 12, and I'm doing this 10 and 12, uh, which before, see, I was worried that this ridge would be higher than this one. And that's why I didn't do the 10 and 12. Just when I was in schematic design mode, it was just, I don't know why we did it that way. But now that I've figured out that it'll be basically almost exactly even by putting a nine foot wall here, right here, instead of a 10 foot wall, I mean, instead of an eight foot wall, then that's gonna be a groovy. And then of course these, let's see, do I have these as still two by eights? Yeah, I need to change that. Two, five. Let me see if I got any questions here. Is the floor truss better to use than say two or 12? Yeah, because if, um, there's Salty Shell back. He won, he won the Mantis X yesterday. Yay. Uh, is the floor truss better to use than any, than two, yeah, two or 12? Cause let's go see why right quick. Hopefully you're still here. Southern Pine. Uh, span tables. Basically, I already know the answer, but I'm going to show you how to find out. You go to your, uh, oopsie, what was that all about? Span tables not working? Uh, here we can see right here. You can go to, just search for, um, you know, you, you, we call it Southern Pine, you know, in the South, uh, but go to your uh, span tables for dimension number and just about, they're all basically the same. They're all basically based on these design loads here. If you go to two by twelves at, even at 12 inches on center, uh, let's see, number, number two is, number two is what is the column you want to look at because that is what you're going to buy. If you go to Home Depot, you can't get anything really better than number two at, at your local lumber stores. All these number ones, you, you're gonna pay out the wazoo for a number one two by 12. They basically don't exist unless you go to like, I mean, you could start using LVLs, but they're gonna be way, way crazy expensive. But as far as we're just talking about dimension number, go to this number two column and see, we're still only looking at 30 pounds per square foot live load. Well, we need to go to 40, 10, here you go. What you want to do is go to where your floor joists say 40, 40 pounds per square foot live load, 10 pounds per square foot dead load. And I'm actually using 15 pounds per square foot on mine. I'm getting, I'm, I'm going to, um, one over three, uh, 480. And this is, this would be one over 360. And this video is not anywhere near long enough to just explain all that. Basically this is your deflection. Um, if you, if you divide the length by 360, then that's what your deflection would be. And anyway, if we go ahead down here to two by 12s at 12 inches on center, they would only span 19 feet. So, uh, the best thing about floor trusses is that because of the way they're made with these webs, you know, in these configurations, these 45, basically 45 degree triangular, you know, uh, configuration, it distributes the load across the members evenly, you know, pretty much. And so there's so many advantages to, to floor trusses, uh, especially at longer spans. Well, first of all, 
if you notice we don't have any columns in our uh, garage to run into and knock down <laughs> so these are clear span and they're also wide they're three and a half inch flanges so you've got plenty of uh, when you start nailing your sheeting you've got plenty your floor decking plenty of wide width here to nail to you can actually be a little off and still hit it and there's, there's plenty of reasons now if you go back to a conventional framing where you've got a crawl space and you can go in here and put a girder halfway at 12 feet then you could use two by tens at 16 inches on center and save a lot of money so that's why i design each project separately depending on the uh use you know and but in this case the guy wants a clear span and he also wants to put a pool table up here and that's why i've got these this is a little over engineered here uh, but uh, i don't want much bounce in the floor let me go back so there's your that's uh you can kind of look up your Let's see. Yeah, so you can kind of look up your spans there, but the other products you can use that are kind of between, you can look up wood eye joists. Like, uh, okay, so uh, the cheapest, if you look up trim joists, these are the cheapest floor, floor trusses you can buy. Okay, trim joists are these floor trusses that have an end on them that you can cut off. Is my head in the way? <laughs> Let's see. They have this end on them that it's like, I think there's like up to 12 inches on the end that you can just cut off and it doesn't affect the structural integrity. Uh, that's, that's really, a, these are really cool. That's what I'm actually using on this job. Are these, here's a better picture. Can you see that? You see how on each end? And so normally you wouldn't be able to cut a floor truss uh, if, a, if a building inspector came out and saw that you had cut the length of a floor truss, he would turn it down. But these particular ones are built with these web, this solid webbing on the ends. Now, from there you would go, you could use uh, wood eye joists. Wood eye joists. And these where they have this composite, this uh, sort of like an OSB uh, continuously, you know. Now these have some deflection to them. I've, I've built plenty of houses with these with 24 foot spans easy, but they will bounce a little. If you, you know, if you've got a dog and for some reason, this is really funny. We had a little, uh, dachshund and he would, he had this particular trot, this, he had, he was in perfect tune with nature. He could just trot and he only weighed like 10 pounds. He could trot across the floor and he could make the entire house vibrate. But it was because I used these things and you can, if you get these things going, uh, they're like a big drum. So they're cool and they're cheaper than floor chesses and they'll span farther than two by twelves or any other dimension lever. But you just got to remember these will deflect a little bit. But you can see, uh, I have used, I've actually used a combination of all of these things. Uh, depending on the spans and that's what I do and that's why I go through this exercise on every job is uh, the, the best thing about it though is once I get to the point where I'm actually building it it's in my head and I've got all the questions <clears throat> yeah I've actually I actually tried to reap as heavy as I am I tried to reproduce what my little dachshund was doing um, and I couldn't, but he, he, he could get it going in rhythm and it was just funny. And we would have to say, Max, stop, stop. <laughs> he would stop and look at us and the, and the, and the floor would stop waving up and down. <laughs> but I mean, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. These things are really strong. I mean, you know, they're, it's, uh, they work well. I mean, these are probably 80% of new construction you see now in new homes and for floor joists, rafters, and, you know, and of course these, these trim joists are used too. You only really see, 
two by tens that are, you know, at 16 inches on center, where you have simple spans um, that are, you know, shorter, like 12 feet. 12. I think you can span a two by 10 up to 14 feet at 16 inches on center. And that's that 40 10 design, that 40 pounds live load, 10 pounds dead load. So I think what I'm going to do now is, um, oh, I need to fix this. Uh, keep putting this off. I need to raise this. I need to make this a two by 10 case in case he does want to, um, make a the floor, you know, make a storage floor up here where all this is the same, on the same level. And you can get that, um, let me turn my roof decking off. Roof decking, there it is. Uh, and again, you can get that insulation. Our stinking energy code here, man. I tell you, you gotta, is that, yeah. Um, it's funny how different cities will adopt different things. We, for, for Tennessee, Chattanooga is one of the most liberal cities, unfortunately, in Tennessee, and they've adopted these, the energy code, which is good for, you know, I guess energy, <laughs> it's not good for us because, you know, like we, these, I could get by with two by eight rafters on this roof framing if I, if I, the spans show me and I can go back to the span tables and show you that two banks work fine, but you can't get, let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's just do four for right now. You can't get, uh, there's an R38, what's it called? There's an R38 that they make, R38 for tuba tins. It's a special grade. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's R38C. Here it is. This, and this is what I had to buy for my current house that I'm living in right now because I used two by tens for all the rafters and I didn't want to fur them down uh, to make them two by twelves because otherwise you would have to have a 12 inch cavity for an R38 insulation, okay? But here, these this R30C, and if I'm giving this out information out for anybody else that might have run into this. This R38C is uh, R30C. Hmm. I thought there was an R38C. I think there is. I think I clicked on the wrong one. R38. I thought it was R38C. Getting too much chance. R38 for. Anyway, this is the kind of tangent I go off on. Uh, they make it for two by tens. I know they do because I just bought it. Anyway, they if you if you run into this situation, they do make an R38. A lot of uh, you know most of the, in some of the country they only require an R30 in the attic or ceiling. Uh, but our, our, you know, people who think they're going to save the world, uh, anyway, don't want to get too political in my construction videos, but <laughs> we, we have to deal with this junk, okay? So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to copy all these. How far will they go? Right there. I can go one more, can I? There we go. So. And I'll finish up because uh, I got to frame. One thing I got to do on each end is frame a wall. <coughs> Excuse me. I got to frame walls that go all the way up on each end that, you know, have different length studs. So that's going to be another two hours that I'm going to spend. But it's worth it. <coughs> now, one thing nice about these, um, this wall framing 
Um, let's see. Did I did I screw that up? I screwed that up, didn't I? What happened? I thought I had this as a. I thought I had used my extension to do that. <clears throat> Let me just show you. Let's see. Let's see what my wall height's going to be. What is my wall height going to My wall height's going to come out from here. Get on the right. I need my red, red axis. There we go. There. It's going to come down to here. So it's 10 foot 5 and. What does that say? I can't read. That wall's going to be 10 foot 5. And seven eighths. So if I want to go back to my my deep wall, I have ten foot five. What's that? One twenty five and seven eighths. So I can put in here one twenty five. Uh, what's seven eighths? What's seven divided by eight? Quick, quick. 1.875. And say, okay. Am I going the right way? Let's see. So, let me just, uh, hey, what? Yeah, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Be careful. So, so. <laughs> Alex telling me he's going to go somewhere. <clears throat> but what I can do is uh, edit this wall assembly. I'm going to make it uh, this one because... Um, actually, I'm going to make it this one. Update. Let's see. I thought I could... Let's see, load update yeah because I just want the framing for right now and then what I'm going to do is actually change this to um, what was it one twenty five and seven eighths one twenty five point eight seven five and then update. But that means I gotta bring it. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, that was the length I altered. <laughs> Edit wall assembly. Where's my height? Here we go. 125 point eight seven five update there we go now but what I was going to show you is um, get rid of those lines now get rid of this is this kind of neat because you can add uh, I can go back and add my deep wall windows and I want this is going to be a triple window, so I want to make it the width. I want to make it uh, 369, uh, 9 foot, 9 foot 1, 9 feet 1 inch. I forgot to put the inch mark on there. And it's going to be 4 foot 1 for my rough opening, just to show you. Let's see. And I need to fix the head height. Anyway, uh, I gotta fix. The, I gotta fix the header height. Maybe I shouldn't get uh, on a tangent right now. Maybe I should stay focused. Let me see if there's any questions. Questions. 
Not base walls, concrete. Your base will be concrete columns with five sixteen foot long six by six beams, then build a shed on it. Five sixteen foot long. So you would have one on each side and then three and then now why would you do that? My my base will be concrete columns with five. Do you have a slope or something? Are you trying to even, are you trying to level out a slope? Is that why you're doing the co concrete columns? And then workshops, sliding barn doors, two sides and one end. Going to build two up here, up here, one and one in Texas. That's cool. Neat. <coughs> so let's see, where was I? I was just trying to get this wall up here at the right height. Because now what I'm going to do, let's see, but I'm also going to build, what if I could save that? I need to save that wall height as a, as a thing. Let's see if it's the right height right quick. I come over here. Yeah, that's right. So that was 125.875. Let me see if I can save that as a, let's see, save, let's call it 125 wall. I might want to use that again. And we'll make it, uh, what's the stud size? Why did it do that? Two by six. Let's see. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wall header height. Oh, I want to see what happened. I need to figure out what the header height would, would be. Wall height. 125.875. Stack depth. Why does it say? Why does it say that custom? And let's save this, and then we'll try to draw one. From here. To, let's see, we gotta go to here. I meant to turn off that siding. And we don't want, we don't want uh, wall sheeting, no. Cladding. Okay, no. Save. Update. There we go. And then I can copy this one over here. Like that. And now I really want this just 
occurred to me. I think I can, oh, I can, I can change. This is another thing. I think I can change the, um, change which way the studs start. Uh, why did it do that? Why did it, why did it do that? There we go. That was weird. It was showing both uh, stud layouts. You can change it to where it changes the layout from one end to the other. And I want my studs to stack up. You should always stack your framing. Uh, A, because of structural reasons. You want all your point loads to be stacked up. But B, because if you're running plumbing or electrical or heat and air up through these, you want them to be stacked up too. So. That's why you'll notice that stud, floor truss, stud, rafter, all the way up, are stacked. That's just uh, a standard to have. So then, that means I should be able to copy that over here now. Uh, it be the way I want it. Now, and the other thing is, the nice thing about these walls, like I said, is I can go back and add windows in them. Just with this little part of the extension, I can go back and, and take this window uh, and just add it. If I just said, okay, see, I can just put it in there. It'll put the header, the trimmers and everything in there. It's pretty cool. But I'm gonna undo that because that, that window doesn't go there. I want to hit escape. So I'm going to stay focused and try to get this roof framing. How long have I been going? Gosh, I wonder how long YouTube would let me go. <laughs> how long have I been going? Does it say where I, this is a new, I can't keep up with all the changes. Let's see if anybody else has got machine shop equipment. Yes, trying to make it support equipment. So you do have a, a grade, because if not, you could just pour a concrete slab and that would support any kind of machine shop equipment. So the only thing I would say about six by sixes is, is that your six by sixes are only gonna span, I don't know, maybe five or six feet. So you'd have to have, you'd end up with a grid of columns under there. Really, I could help you out with that if you want me to. My base will be concrete columns with with five 16 foot long six by sixes. We'll see those six by sixes aren't going to span. No, you're not disturbing me. I, that's why I do these live streams to help other people. Um, otherwise, I could just be, you know, not doing it. But uh, that's the reason I do them. But see, your six by sixes aren't going to span 16 feet. They won't. Um, you can build 200 square feet or less. I'm probably the, um, 16 feet. Yeah, but see, if you're if you're trying to span the six by sixes in the 16 foot long direction, uh, they they're they're undersized. My base will be. I have five. So does that does that does that mean you would have? Um, you can put columns every four feet along the length yeah but say you're going to end up with a grid of columns you could have you could have just uh if you don't have too much of a grade by the time you pour all those footings and you have that grid on every you know you you can end up uh pouring yourself a slab and saving money and time and effort but anyway um let's see here so now what I can do is take this whole thing. Is it all? It's all one group, right? And I can copy it over here. And I can mirror it back. 
thing. Where's my one? Minus one. There we go. And then this point will go back to there. Did I get it? Yeah. And the studs lined up. And that's one thing I'll have to work on. Uh, when I'm when I'm building this in the field, when I'm actually getting to this point. I'll say, okay, Paco, I I, I whipped out and used a a um, an extension to build this framing, but I want my rafters to to stack, and that's what I'll do there. So then, what would happen is this point. Let's see, let me also copy, let's see, what do I need to copy? Oh, I need to copy that, copy that, I oh, know it just getting all bit it. I guess if I didn't, I could block my axis, block my axis. I keep forgetting that's not exactly at the top, so I need to copy that and then I need to go in here and just take out, let's see, what am I doing? I need to put, I need to copy these two. Those copy them. Can I hear where I can work with them? Near it. And maybe back. I found that it's easier to mirror mirror these things instead of just flipping them around because I don't I don't lose my. Um, I don't lose my reference point that way, as far as how they line up this way. So now those all line up good. And why is that beam where it is? Why is that beam there? Hmm. Hmm. So when I, when I copied that beam over, So I'll have to move this over and I'll fix these ceiling joists. I know you're, what you're thinking. No, you won't. You're not going to fix it. Yeah, I am. I promise I'll fix them later. But I need to move this beam over to where it's hitting those. Because somehow, somehow I didn't get that right. Now see if I was smart. Did I make that a component? Did I make these? If I was smart, I would have made those components and all these ceiling joists would have come back. Did I? No, I didn't. That was done. Okay, so I'll fix that later. Alright, so I got that fixed. And then also my decking. Turn on my roof decking. What I might do on the roof decking is just, I might deck this whole side, do it, you know, trim all those pieces. I might, I might fill in all these pieces and then copy it because I'm going to have to do it twice if I don't. But what I'm trying to do now is show that I can just take this and take the pieces off. Let's see, what's well, going to be my dimension? <clears throat> For some reason, they have this weird little thing in here. Yeah, that should have been part of the, that's the weird thing that was Hank that I didn't understand. That, that's, that's weird. But, um, you see that's over here. And that extension did that. 
but my I need to find out where my ridge goes. Yeah, my ridge goes all the way. So what I can do is actually take out that little thing. See, I don't need that, so that helps me. So now I know where. That means I can just butt this part. These two into. Uh, I can move it back. It's right there, see? And bam. That should be up 7 sixteenths. And then I can copy this and move it back to here. Where's that go? Get it on the right axis and then I can lock that. Like that. Let's see. What am I doing? I don't need that. What am I doing? I what I need to do is extend this. I'm freak myself out here, aren't I? I need to go here and pull this all the way over. Oops. End of it and go to there. Like that. Yeah. And then these This isn't gonna be too bad. I can just extend what I can do again is delete one side of this and then fix one side. I can just run these rafters on up. Then I'll have common rafters going there. But I think I'm yeah, I think I'm gonna break for lunch. Let me look and see if there's any other questions. Input columns, six by six on the column spaced, four feet on center. We have frost line here. I did not think slab would work. Yeah, as long as your, um, as long as the turn down part of your slab goes down, how, how deep is your frost line? Is it like, are you talking about in New York or in Texas? Texas, I think it's only like four or five inches. Uh, in New York, what is it, two feet? Frost line, New York. What is that? Uh, 18 inches? Or, or, is, or is it in that next zone, 18 to 32? Let me get rid of some of these tabs so I can go back and forth easier. I think, yeah, 13 to 38 inches. Well, but still, if you're gonna make, if you're gonna dig that many footings for that many columns, you might, you might wanna think about just doing a continuous footing all the way around the perimeter. And, Cause you can span, um, you could use, uh, if you had a continuous, um, just concrete block wall around your perimeter, you could span that 16 feet with two by 12s. And that would be, e cause then, cause just think of how many, how many columns would you have? Would you have four times five? That would be 20. I promise you, um, Digging one continuous perimeter footing that deep is going to be cheaper and less light, less intense, you know, less intense intensity. <laughs> just having 
that would be like, you know, Chinese water torture to me to have to have that many columns if I could clear span it. And so what I would do is dig myself a, a footing 32 inches or whatever it is deep, pour it, build myself up a concrete block wall around the perimeter. Then you could clear span with whatever floor joist you wanted to make it strong. Um, I mean, I've had, I had in our last shop, we had a, uh, what was that, that big industrial saw we had? Uh, what is it? What were they? Shop, uh, Matic. What was it? Uh, ends with Matic. Shop of, what was it? <laughs> Industrial table saws. We had, you know, compressors, joiners. Um, why can't I remember Jet Tools, Grizzly? Uh, anyway, it was a big one. And, um, uh, Oh, you, you get an auger to dig the holes. Yeah. I still think if you had a, a but the thing is, what, how are you going to close in the perimeter? Are you just going to leave the perimeter open? If you went ahead and just did a continuous footing around the edges, you would have your underside closed in also. I mean, how far up off the ground is this thing going to be? Then you don't have to worry about, you know, warthogs. What do y'all have in Texas? <laughs> Chupacabras. You don't have to worry about a chupacabra making a nest under there or badgers, stinking badgers. Uh, in New York, y'all have coyotes. We have coyotes here in Tennessee. So continuous wall, cinder blocks. Yeah, that's what I would do. No wind, no wind whipping around up under there. No critters making nests. And I don't know how far off the ground it would be. I mean, if you were going to do a crawl space, you'd have it. Uh, see, if I knew what your grade would be, um, if you, you, do you have like a, on, on 12 feet or 16 feet, do you have like a, Texas is easier. Yeah, in Texas, you, you probably could do the concrete slab. <laughs> Uh, because I don't think the frost line in Texas is very, yeah, it's like ours, six inches. I mean, we just, we, our rule of thumb here is just one concrete block under grade, eight inches is what we typically make ours, and it's no big deal, no big deal. And technically, I think our footing only has to be, the bottom of the footing only has to be 12 inches below the grade, which is nothing. But I go ahead and make them a little deeper. I, I, I make it so I have one concrete block underground, under the grade. But yeah, it would be a lot easier. Um, uh, even if you, you know, even if you do have an auger you know, and you're going to use sauna tubes or something like that, um, grade is close to level with just the slightest down or slant. Well, still. I mean, if you really did a cost analysis on that and, and you've got almost level, um, what you could do is use like a shoulder block here. Have you ever seen the, uh, called header blocks or shoulder block? CMU. See these things? You, you would run your, um, you would run, um, you would run your perimeter with regular block and then your top course would be this. And so you would fill in the inside with gravel or something, or you could put a pan across it and then you could pour a concrete slab. You know, this allows you to pour a concrete slab up to the top of your block. That's what we use these header blocks for. Here's a good picture right here. JLC, by, by, by the way, this is one of the best construction magazines ever ever made. I used to get this, the, mag, the actual printed version of this. Now I get the, uh, where is it? Uh, but I don't like all the, that's why I like the printed version. Here we go. I can't see it well. Let's see if I can zoom in. 
see how there's a you know you got three two or three courses uh, of regular block then your top course would be the shoulder block and then they would fill all this in with gravel and then you pour concrete up to here but <clears throat> uh, but if you if, if, if you only had like a if you had a very slight change in grade you could do that again I don't mind helping you out with some some details uh, if you want to send me what you got, because uh, see if you if you either either that well, well that would be in in New York I would do that I would use a spread footing you know thirty two inches deep come up with regular block until the top, top course and use a uh, header block on top we call them shoulder block header block um, you know. But in Texas, I would just do a turn down slab where the edges of the, that's what we do here. We just dig a, uh, we dig a footing that's only about 12 inches deep and 16 inches wide. And then we form it up. And then when you get up above the footing level, the, the concrete, the slab just becomes a certain, uh, the width it normally would. But I can show you I can show you a different detail for Texas than for uh, New York and uh, uh, probably save yourself a lot of grief. But um, and then you know then your perimeter would be closed in. That would be if it was my shop. I would definitely want the even if I was going to do those columns, those piers. I would go back and uh, somehow either use some metal siding or something to close it in around the base because you don't want critters going up under there rats and stuff love that kind of thing they'll go up in there and build nests and sometimes you never know they're there oh you're in connecticut i keep saying new york for some reason oh you know what i was thinking i was thinking of um, i guess it's outcast is in new york and i think isn't Kingpin? I think he's in New York too. So I know a bunch of people in New York and Pennsylvania, but you're in uh, Connecticut. Yeah, the critters are something else, especially rat, mites and rat rats. They the mice, the field mice, love to get up in there, and they'll build a little mound right in the high corner. And just go out and get some straw and stuff they'll make and then they'll have babies and the next thing you know you know you're just uh you're just a haven for critters but um all right guys well i think i'm gonna take a lunch break and of course youtube's probably gonna be fussing at me here in a minute anyway i've been going for several hours i don't even know how to tell how long i've been going but I may, I may start back up after lunch, might not, but I appreciate uh, you all watching and asking questions because it makes me feel like that this is worth doing. If I just stay here and talk to myself for two or three hours, it, it, uh, it's not very much fun. <laughs> but uh, thanks a lot. And if I don't see you guys um, uh, before New Year's, uh, Happy New Year, and hope your holidays are going well. Thanks, guys.